Hey, Trinity Church family, we're going to talk today about Romans 10, 5 through 13, which reads, Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and it is in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame, for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now friends, I love this passage of scripture for two reasons. First, this passage would have been incredibly countercultural for Paul's first century Roman audience. And why? Because everything in their world was about rigidized systems of sacrifices and behaviors to honor the pantheon of Roman gods and goddesses. You see, if you were in the first century, you would have spent a lot of time and money honoring those gods, but not necessarily because you believed in them or believed that they were interested in a relationship with you. That was just crazy talk. You see, you sacrificed because it was what was expected socially and because it was demonstrating allegiance to Rome and to the deities that Rome acknowledged. A New Testament theologian Nije Gupta says, ancient worshipers were generally not looking for nirvana or inner peace. They were not obsessed with heaven or the afterlife. They believed that the welfare of persons, families, and civilizations depended on the goodwill and the favor of Mount Olympus. That was all. In addition, there was this complicated system of priests and intermediaries who were necessary to make sure that the sacrifices that you brought were done correctly in order to ensure that the gods liked you and that there was favor over the empire. But the idea of a simple faith built on belief and obedience that comes from love in a God who taps your emotions and your thoughts as well as your will and your actions in a beautiful exchange of life and love for all of eternity? That was unusual. That was crazy. And yet, it is just what the Apostle Paul says here, isn't it? If we declare with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. And that is really good news. But I love this passage for a second reason too, and that's the fact that everyone gets in on the good news. You have to remember that Paul was talking to a group of people who would have been scandalized at the very idea that God would make such a salvation available to the Gentiles as well as to the Jews. Those groups of people didn't like each other very much before Jesus. And not only that, but it wasn't just Gentiles, it was all Gentiles. In fact, one of my favorite verses in the New Testament is Colossians 3.11, where Paul talks about this even further when he says, Here, there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Even the Scythians? I mean, not just the Gentiles, but even the Scythians? You see, in the last 50 to 100 years, there's been a ton of archaeological research on this particular group of people called the Scythians. They were the boogeymen of the Greek and Roman worlds. They were a horse culture that was nomadic, and it served as the basis of the myth of the Amazons. They were merciless in battle. They scalped their enemies. They drank from goblets made from their enemies' skulls. Their women were lethal in battle as they fought alongside their men, and the Scythians were known to be expert archers who tipped arrows into poison made from the venom of of Eurasian asps on the steps. The Jews often shuddered at the idea that the Gentiles were going to be part of their spiritual family in Christ, but even the Gentiles would have shuddered at the idea that the Scythians got in on the deal. Those people? Yeah, even those people, even the Scythians. And that is good news for us too, brothers and sisters. Now you may be thinking that there are some group of people who are too far gone for Jesus to embrace, but you would be wrong. Everyone gets in. Or maybe you are one of those people who would say, yeah, Jack, I'm basically a Scythian. You have no idea what I've done or where I have been. And I just say that it doesn't matter, friends. You get in too. The gospel is big enough for you. Jesus is Lord. And for all who put their faith and trust in him, he offers to save, not just after we die and go to heaven, but even for right here, 
right now, every addiction, every brokenness, every dark night of purposelessness, every relationship, everything falls under his lordship and he offers good news of hope for what he can do in the midst of it. No matter who you are, brothers and sisters, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That means me. That means you. And that means everyone else too, no matter who they are. And that really is good news, isn't it?